What's going on everyone? So I recently posted a video about uh, FCF or Fuzzy Finder. And I mentioned I was going to look into trying the Vim plugin, uh, fzf.vim. And oh my God, it is awesome. I can't believe I've been living without FZF in my life in the, the terminal as well as Vim. So let's take a look at what I got set up and how I'm using it. So I got the two plugins, fcf.vim by June Gun. Um, he is also the guy or gal, whoever it is, that has done Goyo and Limelight that I have, and I believe also a Vim plug. So I got a lot of plugins from this person. Probably almost as much as, uh, probably actually I think I have more plugins by this person than Tim Pope. Um, but you have to have these two um, lines that are on the repo that you have added to your um, plug section. And let's see how I've actually implemented this. So for fuzzy finding, um, I have mapped control F to find. So basically, you know, I want to find things, control F, just like how you do in PDF. Um, if I was in Vim, it would pull up all the files from the current directory I am in. Really useful. Um, I don't know how I've been living without this. If I'm in a Git repo and I want to quickly jump to another file in the repo, I don't. Maybe I don't want to open Nerd Tree. And honestly, that's you know kind of a lot of extra um, J and K button presses than just doing Fuzzy Finder with Control F, start typing. There's the entry and enter. Um, it can be faster. Now, I've also mapped it so that if I'm in a file currently editing code or something, and I'm in insert mode, and if I do control F, it'll actually search the lines of code and, or text that are actually in the file itself. Um, and then if I'm in still in normal mode, uh, or actually I think I just have it map, so pretty much any mode, um, if I do control G, because this isn't really map, this wasn't really mapped to anything particularly useful, um, at least as far as I know, I would do control G and it would just give me like a, uh, kind of like how power line right here has a percentage of how far through the document you are. Um, it was just kind of telling me that, but over here. So I, I never used control G for anything. So I will map a lot of these keys. Like I test their functionality before I, I map over them and they don't really do anything that is really important to me or I just wasn't using them. So I didn't really care too much. Um, so I've started using these three maps in fuzzy with fuzzy finder and it's the workflow is just awesome i can't believe i've been living without this uh, not only in the terminal for my vim wiki shortcut with the the custom function doing the preview for like my wiki notes but with this this is awesome so if i'm going to be in uh, say a git repo and this is like the repo for my website if i was going to open up a uh you know, a blank document or something in this directory. Let's just do index, just a random file. Now, I'm in normal mode. I just entered, I can maneuver and I can go through the text, whatever, I'm in normal mode. If I do control F or how I think of it as find in normal mode, it will actually open up fuzzy finder in this current directory. I got 42 files in this git directory. This is awesome. So now I can easily just find out what is in this directory, select it and look at it. Um, and none of this was set here by me. So like uh, the preview, the syntax highlighting on this preview, this is awesome. I did not have to set any of these settings. And this is actually already a very aesthetically pleasing output in FCF uh, within Vim. I really, really enjoy this look. So if I was gonna type something like blog, okay, there's my blog entries, terminal, there we go. There's the entry I have on you know, NeoMut in the terminal based on just the word blog and then starting to type terminal. Enter, there I am, I'm in the file. Oh, I don't want this one, I want blog and uh, let's do web, there we go, website, bam. I'm easily in another file, in another buffer, perfect. But what if I'm in a very long file? Now let's go to my, uh, I think it's the library page. So control F, library, there we go. Enter, I'm in my library page, and this thing is 107 lines long. But let's say I wanna search for a specific uh, book or author. So if I'm at the top of my document, and I am go into insert mode, I can do control F again for find, but this time I'm in insert mode. Control F, now I can search the actual contents of this file, and I wanna search for, let's just say Wickham. There we go, Hadley Wickham. Couple uh, articles on 
this are a couple of books I've read by Hadley Wickham. I can go there, enter there. I'm at that line where Hadley Wickham was, and then I can you know edit this document or whatever I wanted to do. I really, really like this workflow. And now because this is in a Git repository, I can do Control G, and I can actually look at the changes in this Git repository. So I can easily go through this and see the diffs or just grab the commit numbers. And there's actually some helpful shortcuts down here that will tell you like what you can do with some you know key commands. Like if I want to revert back to a prior um, version of this page, then this page, I can actually see the entire Git history of it. And again, none of this highlighting preview, none of this I had to do. All I did was add the plugin. That was it. And I have all of this great looking output that is also actually for me really functional. Uh, really, really enjoy this. Um, I can just escape to get out of it, um, and it, it works just fine. It works great. I really, I just fiddled with this today, and I just enjoy it so much. Um, now, there was some other stuff I was going to talk about. Um, I've been watching more of Nick's cast's videos, and I was kind of scouring his VimRC from some of his old commits. And there were some things like using a tab remapped over the percent sign to do matching um, like brackets. Like if I have a square bracket here and I want to quickly go over there, I don't have to do like F for find and go over to the square bracket or do a you know forward slash search. I can just do tab and it pops me back. I can start typing new things, you know, whatever, and tabbing back and forth for this. Now I'm not, I'm actually going to look into doing coc.nvim so that way I can get um, syntax highlighting and autocomplete. I did discover, like in my um, uh, vf and into uh, let's do uh, variant. No, I want to do LaTeX. LaTeX. Actually, I need to go to my research directory. And then. All right, so if I was going to be in a directory or in a, in a file, and I actually discovered that by, de by default, Vim has a syntax or like autocomplete. Like if I did, it was starting to type begin something, I could do control X, control L, and it would actually give me some like syntax highlighting. I, I could hold, um, uh, see, this is, it's unwieldy. I need to do actually. Um, COC or some better method because if I do control X control L it'll give me this menu I can use the arrow keys to toggle through these and then hit enter to actually complete it but I hear that the workflow with the plugins is better than this and I want to be able to just do tab auto completion and I've seen some of the stuff in the you complete me read me or um, yeah the read me on the on the repo and that looked a lot more friendly than this so I'm gonna look at coc.nvim because I hear that's even better uh, but I'm going to play around with the auto completion plugins because that's that's like the next step for me. I really uh, want the auto completion, and then also like the peak preview definitions of like different things. So I'm going to be working on that. But I have this um, snip from uh, Nixcasts that I added recently, where it simply will let you just take any of these like characters and treat it like, you know, if you're going to do CIW for change inner word, or you do it for like CI double quotes or changing the contents of a double quote, some of these things, some of these characters are not mapped to, um, you know, part of the text objects. Now this is kind of hacky, but it works and it works for what I'm going to do. So like, say for instance, uh, I'm in markdown and I have syntax highlighting like underscore for italics, uh, star for bold, you know, whatever, what have you. Uh, if I wanted to easily change the text inside that formatting, well, it's going to delete all of it. And I actually need to redo um, the uh, formatting from scratch. So let's actually do VF. And then I'm going to go to just some random thing. Eh. All right. So if I was going to do like underscore, or I'm sorry, um, italic. So let's say I wanted to go and actually change this word. It's now between underscores. Now, because I have um, the setting set, it's actually going to let me do CI underscore, and that'll work. But without that little snip, it would actually change all of that text and treat it as one single word object in removing the underscores when I still wanted my text to be italic. 
So it's just one extra little step that actually helps retain formatting on things like Markdown or other syntaxes that use these uh, mapped characters that you want um, to change the inner contents of, um, or capital T. Uh, so that way you could easily just change all of it. Uh, there was some other stuff I added from Nick's casts as well. Oh yes, the splits. So now if I hold, um, the, if I press the C character and then do control HJKL, it'll open up a split in that direction with using Vim keys. So if I was going to open up a new split to the right, I would press C control L. Oops, do there. So C control L and it will actually open up a new split for me. C control H opens up another C uh, control J, C, control K, and I'll start opening up these splits. Now, to manage the splits better, especially if I'm not saving any contents or if I open something, I didn't edit it, and I just want to close it, I mapped control Q to uh, colon Q bang. That way it just quits. Now, if there's contents to be saved, it won't let me just hard quit or it won't just save and quit because I want to actually control that. But if it's something I haven't edited, like a split like this, a blank split, I can just do control Q and just close all these splits and it's much easier to manage. Uh, now there is this little issue with the resizing of this and fix it right there, going full screen. Cool. So that is one of the thing I added from Nixcast that I got is just the split management. And um, I added these uh, indent guides from indent line and I actually got some of these like cool characters. So uh, the deeper you go into the nested indents, it actually creates more dashes. And I think that's pretty cool. This was messing with um, like the display of some of my links. Like if I was gonna go through a link in my VimWiki, you see how I can hover and it expands like this. Originally, I wasn't seeing anything. Like I could hover over this and I would still only see like this text right here instead of even the braces. So this was hiding a lot of the symbols I needed to edit for my formatting and kind of wrecking a little bit of havoc. Took a little bit of stack overflow searching to fix it. But that is how I've been using um, FZF in my new workflow and in Vim. It's just fantastic. I can't believe I've been living without this. I can travel. I can go back through my commit history, see diffs, I can you know, search through the lines of code in my documents and uh, just the general files in whatever, in whatever directory I'm in. I think this is absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, I highly, highly recommend FCF for everything, for Vim, for the terminal, everything. It's just fantastic. So I'm gonna be making probably more videos on how I mess with Vim in the future, because now I gotta mess with COC, language servers, autocomplete, and peak definitions and shit for <laughs> different code languages. So that's what I'm gonna be messing with in the future. But oh my gosh, just massive level up with just the functionality of FCF. I I love it. I cannot believe I've been living without this. So. Enjoy and definitely try it out. Let me know if you've found any really cool uses for it or if you found anything. Um, if you want to ever chat, you can always just shoot me an email. It's in my um, description for the YouTube channel or you can just join the Slack channel. Links are ever in, all down below if you want to check those out. Peace out.